Hello again, and thank you for joining me. This is Pastor Jason with a little bit of Bible time. Have you not read the scriptures? Jesus said that regularly and uh, through our presuppositions. I mean, I have my own, but my presuppositions are, I think there's a rapture and I want to go. I want to be that servant who escapes all these things. Have you not read the scriptures? Let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians Chapter 1, Paul writes, We are bound to thank God for you always, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other, so that we ourselves boast to you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. Now, Paul is not saying there won't be times of trouble, hard times, suffering, you know, tribulation, if you will, but not the megas philipsis, the great tribulation. He continues on, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. So he is speaking of that. Now, context for this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul says, you have no need that I should write to you, brethren. Well, either they have perfect understanding or they don't need to know. Now, he also said, uh, there's two places in the Bible that Paul says, you have no need that I write to you, brethren. One is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and he says, you have no need that I write to you about brotherly love for you. You expressed it perfectly well. But the day of the Lord, the tribulation time, he says, you have no need that I should write to you about these things. Why is that? That'll be another video, but in essence, he has no need to write to the church of Thessalonica about the, the day of the Lord because they won't be there, okay? They're raptured out ahead of time. Separate video, but I just want to hit this real quickly. So he repays with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now get this. This is the part that if you read carefully, you see rapture verses. We don't know what Paul taught the church in Thessalonica. But he said in just this two-week two period of time, they were very mature, and they had understanding of the deep things. And so, in my personal opinion, I think he taught them about the rapture and the day of the Lord. He says, when he, Jesus, comes in that day, so now the day, what is this day? Turn real quickly with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The day of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day of Christ, the day of Jesus, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. These are different phrases used in the New Testament. And uh, in the use of these, ex explaining to us the new paradigm which the believer sees the day of the Lord. The Old Testament, the day of the Lord was a day of judgment. But in the New Testament, the day of the Lord starts with the resurrection of the believers where we're translated up into heaven and we are given new heavenly bodies and made to be like Jesus. What a wonderful day that will be. And eternity will begin for us at the day of Jesus, the day of Christ, the day of the Lord Christ Jesus. However, it says it uh, in the multiple places that it says it. But I'll read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. But this day is the day that the believer is judged at the Bemis seat. The world will be judged at the day of the Lord. The believer will be judged at the Bemis seat of Christ where he translates us, he takes us into his heavenly realm, he gives us new bodies, and we will bear in our bodies the things that we have done in the body, whether good or evil, Second Corinthians chapter 5. So this day of the Lord, or that day, will reveal it it will be revealed by fire in that day. That's the judgment seat of Christ from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the apocalypsis, the revelation. This is the same word, revelation. Oh, I can't remember. Is it seven times in the scripture or is it 13 times? Oh, much studying. Uh, but this word, this is the same word as the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so in the revealing 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will also confirm, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is this day? Paul, back to first, excuse me, Second Thessalonians 1.10. When he comes in that day, what day is that? The rapture, the mass resurrection, the day of judgment for the believers. Is it a 24-hour day? No, it's a period of time. So beginning at the translation, the mass resurrection of believers, this is a period of time that will begin the day that the Lord is revealing himself to the world, the day of the Lord. For us, it's the day of Christ Jesus where we are judged according to our faithfulness to our actions. We will receive reward upon our faithfulness. But he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Paul taught them they believed. They had a good firm understanding on end times things, scenarios. And I believe it is the rapture is one of the things that they were solidly confirmed in and they believed this and that's one reason he had no need, no need to write to them but check this out verse 11 so first corinthians chapter 5 chapter 4 excuse me the rapture is revealed by paul and then in chapter 5 he they're told that there's no need because jesus will come as a thief in the night and steal them out of this earth and there's no need that he should write to them because they're not children of the night uh, john chapter 12 but they're children of the day and they will be taken up to be with the lord made like the Lord and judged by the Lord. And that's how we can be made like him. But he says here now in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, Therefore, we always pray. Therefore, we all also, sorry, therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. What calling is this? Uh, <laughs> to be glorified in that day. That you be count, we count uh, that God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness, and work of faith with power. Wow, this faith with power, God through His power, He's going to resurrect us. He's going to give us new bodies. We're going to be changed in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye. But I want you to notice, He's talking about that day, and then He says, "Pray always." So remember those words, that God would count you worthy. Now, Paul is pulling from words of Jesus from Luke chapter 21, Luke 21, 36. Let me read that to you. You see, when we read the Bible in the light of our presuppositions of a denomination or something, we read it uh, with our eyes closed. We need to pray, God, please, what does the scripture mean today to me? What does the scripture mean today? In the context of the scriptures, what is the author writing about when he opens this up and gives us this? It's called exegeting or expositing, exposing what the original author said, meant to say when he said these things. Pray always that you be counted worthy of these things. Jesus' words in, in Luke chapter 21, verse 36 of that day, of that tribulation day, he says, watch therefore and pray always. Two exhortations that Jesus gives to those who are not watchful. He will come upon them as a thief. He will vomit them into the tribulation. You will not know what day I come upon you. Watch therefore the doctrine of the imminent return of Christ in the rapture, meeting us in the clouds, not the second coming, a second event that precedes the second coming, which starts the clock ticking for the day of the Lord, which starts as a thief in the night, Peter tells us, but ends with fervent fire as the heavens and earth dissolve into the day of God, where 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 28. Oh, this is too much information already. I hope you wrote that down, though. Read that. It's the day of God where Jesus Christ himself hands over the kingdom which he earned because he was slain as the lamb. And Jesus Christ will hand over the kingdom to his father, and God, and it will be the end of all things. And the last enemy, death, will be defeated. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, I believe. So, when we put all these things together, when we read it in, the, in a fresh light, we see that the day of God is the end of the day of the Lord, where the Lord Jesus, who was revealed in the apocalypse, the revelation of Jesus Christ, when he hands over the kingdom to his Father, closing it out with the day of God. 2 Peter 3, is that verse 8 through 10 there? Well, anyways... Watch, therefore, 
and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Now, link Luke 2136 with 2 Thessalonians 1.11, Therefore pray always that you be counted worthy. Jesus says, pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things. Jesus is talking about to the Thessalonians in the day when he shows up, when he comes in that day, that they may escape the tribulation, the thalipsis that is coming upon those who trouble them. In the, in the imminent return, Paul was like, could happen any minute. And we see it all throughout the scriptures. Judgment mixed with, it, with, it, the, uh, with the believers. Um, excuse me, judgment meted out on the unbelievers. And grace and mercy extended with judgment at the Bema Seat in that day to the believers. And, and Paul and Jesus, Jesus quoted by Paul here, we're praying, we're praying that you be counted worthy to escape. And escape what? Jesus says all these things that are going to come upon the earth. That is the Lord coming to rapture his church and take us out of here. What a wonderful day that will be. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, I pray uh, for you who are watching these videos that you have just understanding uh, about the Lord and, and a wonderful relationship with God. And I am asking you as a friend, if you would like and subscribe, that would be fantastic. God bless you all. Have a great day. Take care.